I wanna give you three ways you can make some extra income as a pharmacist. These are things that you can do without more education, certifications, or going back to school. And on top of it all, these are things that I have done and I wanna give you a few examples of pharmacists who are doing this work right now. Who doesn't want some extra income? I do. Uh, and I love using it for the things that I want in life. For me, it's more so about lifestyle freedom, paying off my debts, going to places like Portugal or traveling around the United States with my family. I love all that stuff and who knows why you want it. But know that if you start this journey, you don't know where it could lead you. It could lead you down a totally different path. In fact, lots of these side incomes that I'll be sharing with you are things that you could eventually be doing full time. It's something that I'm doing and a few of the pharmacists that I'm mentioning today. All right, option number one that any pharmacist can do is medical writing or continued medical education. This is a huge field that spans all sorts of different industries from pharma to digital health, to company websites, to publishing content, even in places like Pharmacy Times or Drug Topics. Becoming a medical writer is honestly kind of easy. You can go get published in almost any association, uh, online journal, you can get published uh, by writing articles for them. You can get often paid to do this, but this is often how a lot of people get started. But one of the easiest ways to make an extra income is to speak. Creating CME material is pretty easy, honestly. I've taught some courses on this and classes. You can even use ChatGPT to help organize your thoughts and your outlines, as well as help you source real references for your material. There's some ethical questions about doing that or not, but I'm saying that it's super easy to get started. I regularly speak on farmcon or freece.com and I'm actually speaking tonight a little bit after recording this video. Writing or speaking, any kind of continued education is not challenging. You do not need to have an expertise in order to learn a subject and be able to present it in front of others. Anytime there's a local conference going on, this is an opportunity for you to present your ability to communicate, to speak, and get paid a few hundred to even thousand dollars plus to deliver this kind of content. In fact, one of my favorite strategies to do and what we've helped other pharmacists do is to take their content that they've delivered usually in the pharmacy space and go out and replicate that same content for nursing conferences, PA conferences, physician conferences, because they want to know that material usually as well. But if you're just curious to get started, do it for free. Volunteer for an organization. They're always looking for new and interesting topics from new speakers. And it's just, it's so easy to get started. And the really cool thing about the medical writing piece of this versus the education is that this can become a full-time career. Check out this podcast episode with Milena who shares her journey of going from working as a pharmacist to becoming a medical writer, working remotely when she wants on projects that she loves, living the dream in my opinion. The second side hustle that is easy to get started is consulting slash coaching. The basic premise here is that you take any expertise that you have and you deliver it to help people or organization solve problems. There's a wide range here of options that you could do. So you could be like my friend Brian Bisher, who specializes in coaching men on their physical health. He does everything from helping them with their diets to their exercise routines. And this is something he's been doing for years and really enjoys helping transform the lives of the men that he serves. Or you could be like my newer friend, Jenna Quinn, who shares her journey on LinkedIn often and running her company, Perfecting Peds, where she does consults in the world of pediatrics, helping those younger patients with a lot of meds and making their policy pharmacy problems less burdensome. Or you could be like my other friend, Willissa Clark, who has published a book about uh, delivering at home. Wild niche to get into. <laughs> um, there's not many pharmacists doing this kind of thing, but she helps women learn about this process as what she went through 
and provides consults and help people overcome the barriers to doing something like that. It doesn't matter what you want to get into. The world of consulting and coaching is huge. It's wild. But it's really about understanding what problems are out there in the market space. How can you validate that there's a need or demand for that through conversations and connecting with people and then helping a few organizations or companies gathering up those testimonials, gathering up the process and making the whole thing better. And then it's all about delivering results, making sales and marketing your services out there. I mean, heck, that's how I got started. I was once an Amcare pharmacist who had uh, done a lot of training and provided services in the world of coaching. And I was helping all sorts of people from every walk of life, from chiropractors, dentists, music studio owners, um, advertising agents. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to help pharmacists. And I did that for about a year and a half. And that's what helped me transition into what I do now full time, i.e. running the Happy Farm D and being a career coach. It's a lot of fun. I like it. I think there's two modes to think about coaching or consulting. It's the B2B model or the B2C model, business to business, business to consumer. I like to think of coaching or consulting into really two worlds. It's B2B or B2C, business to business or business to consumer. And the B2B is a little bit harder, harder to get into. You often have to validate that you have results and that you can get businesses results in that space. An example that comes to mind is Larissa Thomas, who recently started up her business with her husband in helping consult organizations, facilities in the world of USP 797 compliance. Something way over my head, but there's a lot of opportunity in that space and she is seeing results happen and getting companies results. On the flip side of this, for B2C, the barrier to entry is much easier. You're working with consumers. You typically are working with a much smaller budget, but it is much easier to get an individual to make a sale that is anywhere from a hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars depending on the packages that you're selling i i personally love coaching I, I do it for a living i have a coach myself i've been doing it a lot while so you know obviously i'm going to be promoting that anyone gets involved in that i would not recommend courses i would not recommend uh training M my honest recommendation is that you just start helping people if you can find someone, you can create a strong agreement with another person to help them get some sort of result, whether it's losing 10 pounds, um, helping them with an aspect of their life, um, helping them with services, providing consults about uh, legal matters, whatever it is, uh, just get some people results, get those testimonials, and then start charging for it uh, for other people. It's a great way to validate that you'll actually enjoy it um, and that you can help people and that you want to go down this path. So the third way that pharmacists can make a side hustle is through training. There's lots of different things that you as a pharmacist can do to train other people. Sometimes that is actually being a preceptor for students. You know, what's often not communicate sometimes with a few colleges is that they pay their preceptors a certain stipend. Now things are changing in that world. It's not always the same uh, for every college and sometimes it's often viewed as giving back to the profession. So it's not true across the board, but there's plenty of other things that you can train on. Companies hire pharmacists at times to provide education to patients, to providers. You can go around and provide training about different uh, medications, about guidelines, about all sorts of things within healthcare. One of the things that I did early on was I got paid to provide training for psychological safety. Not something that you'd think most pharmacists are experts in, but I took a class while working as a clinical pharmacist on psychological safety within the system I was in. I was trained to be a trainer and then I took that training and I went out and provided my expertise and my knowledge in the context of a company. Corey Jinx is a good friend of mine who is providing training in that context, a B2B context. 
you know, I was actually texting him on my phone and I asked him, so what do you actually do? And he said, I use comedy to help organizations break convention and reach their potential. And I thought this was very interesting. He goes into companies as well as speaking at conferences about improv and about how to use that skill to break conflict and to have better conversations in the workplace. This is a pharmacist teaching about comedy and improv. That is not something I think many people plan out as to what they want to do. I mean, personally, it's amazing that he would even consider doing this. And he has rave reviews on his websites from companies that say, this guy is awesome. Another example that I've seen many times over is leadership development programs. Lots of associations hire pharmacist leaders to provide consulting and mentoring for the next generation. I've seen a few of these innovation programs and I've been invited to a few. And I don't know all the innards that go on with it, but I'd imagine it's actually very similar to what I do as a coach. As long as your expertise is not in something that is related to intellectual property within your organization, you can provide that training to others and you can be paid to do it. Elaine Blythe comes to mind as another pharmacist who has a lot of experience in veterinarian pharmacy. She's taken that experience and she actually now has a class at the University of Florida in their remote learning department where she's teaching dozens, if not well over hundreds of students about veterinarian pharmacy for the next generation of people. She's getting paid to do that. And it's a great side hustle to be considered a remote faculty for one of the top universities in the nation. You could even take your knowledge and make a course. A course that caught my attention in my research for this was done by Lorraine Lo Loner? Loner? I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. She has a course called How to Become a Certified Pharmacy Technician on Udemy. And according to their stats, she is charging $12.99 for that and has had over 1,700 students in her course. You can do the math, but that is a nice side income. Or there's people like Hans Boateng, who is the investing tutor and has taught, I believe, probably thousands of people on finances in the healthcare space. Uh, Brandon Dyson over at TLDR Pharmacy, where he's constantly creating different clinical cheat sheets and all sorts of great materials. They have sold, I, I don't know how many, but it's quite, quite a nice following that they have. And the key thing here for all of these side hustles is just find problems that you are curious about. You want to know more about, you would enjoy helping other people. And if you can identify what that problem is and you can create a solution to help people solve that problem, well, it's just about putting that solution out there, helping a few people, validating that you like it and that you would want to do more of it and then just keep repeating that process one person at a time. Who knows where you could end up? If you didn't know, I'm Alex Barker, the founder of The Happy Farm D, where we coach pharmacists into jobs that they love. And sometimes we do help them either start or grow their businesses. If you're interested, I would recommend you check out some of our blogs and things on our website or talk with one of our career advisors. If you didn't know, we're coaches at the Happy Farm D. And we have quite a few coaches who have different careers and different side incomes. And we've got some insight about helping people not just start them, but grow them and even transition to them full time. If you'd like to talk with us and start developing your own plan as to how to get this done, hey, just set up a time to talk with us. Just like talking with a pharmacist in the community, it's free to talk to us. And we would love to help you get a little bit clearer about the direction you'd want to go next, whether it's a side income or a career change. There'll be a link somewhere below that you can check out. And we would love to talk with you. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're a pharmacist making a side income, what did I leave out? What have you been doing? Uh, that is working for you to make some extra income. Maybe it's things like expert witnessing or consulting in different organizations. Maybe it's doing MTMs for Aspen RX or it's something even as simple as, hey, I've got a 
PRN job that's paying me a few extra hundred bucks a month. Whatever it is, we would love to hear it in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, and until I see you in the next one, take care.